Hi, my name is Trolls, and in this video, we're going to take a very deep journey into our new 8DO Studio Percussion Orchestral. This is actually the third library in our Studio Percussion series. We started out with our auxiliary percussion that contained no less than 72 different percussion instruments. So you got shakers and bongos and congas and snares and bass drums and tabalas and cowbells and right other things in the sort of more auxiliary department. We then followed up with our exotic edition recording purely exotic tonal percussion. So instruments that you may not have heard of such as Kaiser drum, tuba phone, scaphophone, and a variety of other instruments that are beautiful, but more tonal and exotic in their nature. And then we have our third edition here, purely dedicated to the most common orchestral tonal percussion instruments, such as marimba, vibraphone, xylophone, glockenspiel, crotales, and tubular bells. But this is not your average sample library, and it's not just that we've deep sampled these instruments, it goes far, far beyond that. And it's the first library that actually allows you to fully do completely realistic percussion. And here are the reasons. First of all, you have different mallet choices. We actually recorded each of these instruments with different mallets. So you have soft felt mallets on mallet one, and then you have sort of harder, more pointy mallets and wooden mallets on mallet two. In addition, we also deep sampled instruments with brushes, so you can get more of that brush feel. It's great for more motion picture, those palsy kind of things. We also bowed a variety of the instruments. They're actually really beautiful when they're bowed. You can get some beautiful tonal sustained aspects out of them. And of course, we also have rolls for them here. But where this library really stands apart, it's not just that you can choose the different mallets or brushes or bowing and all that stuff. It's also that we have our new groove sampling technology in it. Groove sampling is something we started with the first edition, our auxiliary edition, and we also did it in our exotic tonal edition, and we also did it here for the orchestral. And it essentially takes over where multi-samples don't work. And I'll demonstrate that in great length in this video, why it's such an important method for fully recreating lifelike percussion. You have an additional set of controls down here. You can control the stereo image here. You have amplitude and pitch envelopes here. You've got filter envelopes. You can also control the transient shape of the sound here. And the dynamics button here actually allows you to control the velocity responsiveness on your keyboard. Down here you have a sequence so you can actually sequence everything and I'll demonstrate that in the video as well. If you want to create your own rhythmic sequences, this uh, corresponds to velocity layers here. We also have filter LFO and you can control the speed of it here. And in addition, we also recorded all the instruments with three different microphone positions. So you've got close, mid, and room. And these are all compilations of multiple microphone arrays. So really, really beautiful sounding. On top of that, you've got our front-faced effects here. You have a bunch of different filter types here that you can assign to the filter button here. And you can always right-click here and assign any of these guys to your CCs. You've got a gate function, pitch, delay, compressor. You also have our new textual convolution delay called form. And on the back side here, we have our trustworthy chaos effects as well. But let's just get right into it. Let's start out here by listening to our marimba HD. And the reason we call this particular patch here HD is that every single articulation is loaded here. You can see the memory footprint is 2.2 gigabytes. And the reason is that you can actually load or unload every single articulation here. So in this patch, everything is loaded, every single articulation for the entire marimba here. And we also got two different microphone positions, but it's a beautiful, rich marimba sound, what they're supposed to sound like when they're really pristinely sampled. Let's listen to uh, another variation here. You can see I'm only using the close microphone positions, but um, I think I added some delays to it. Yeah, there's some delays on it here. So remember with delays. We also created another patch here, um, which is a preset, and the library actually, I think, contains like 70 different presets. This is a more orchestral sounding mallet, so we're using mallet one more soft here, but you can see that we've added um, some reverb here using the convolution reverb. We have tons of different uh, custom convolutions, uh, both in terms of hall, but also in terms of more sort of sound design stuff. And as I mentioned here on the front page as well, um, you got access to our textual convolution, but we'll get into that. But this is really more of a sort of orchestral sounding marimba, so a little more lush and hall sounding.
And as you may have noticed, it has a really beautiful, not too pingy sound. Um, this is in part me um, playing the velocities in a sort of tempered range, but you can also control that here in the dynamics. And obviously Mallet 2 is notably more pointy. Let me just play what I just did, um, but with Mallet 2 instead. So you can hear the attack on Mallet 2 in particular has a different sound. The whole timbre of the instrument changes. Let's listen to uh, another preset here. This is a little more sound designy. One of the things that's really important to us is that it's super easy to use the libraries we are creating. So even this is the most, probably the most comprehensive sampled marimba ever done. It's super easy to use. And in this case here, for example, you can hear the attack was cut off. That was essentially just uh, using this envelope here and all of a sudden you have that more swelling sound. And then you can see here, we added some wonder reverb to it as well. And that's essentially how that patch was created. And let me show you something else actually quickly here. You can see the patch right now is one gigabyte and that's because every single articulation is actually loaded in here. So so um, I'm going to unclick all these guys here in real time and let's see what we can get the memory footprint uh, down to here. Let me just unclick these guys here and all of a sudden you can see we're down in a sort of more tempered range of uh, memory footprints. So 75 mix. It's not bad for a deep sample marimba. Next up here, let me also um, show you something else. This is a even more sound design patch and um, I'm working on a demo right now where you're gonna hear it, but this is a marimba bass. So essentially the marimba tuned down 12 semitones here and then tuned down here an additional 12 semitones, so 24 semitones down. It's just a great fat sound. If you got a subwoofer like I do, that sound really, really goes all the way downstairs. Uh, let me show you something else here. Um, this is actually a good example. Before we get into the groove sampling articulations here, let me just show you what you can do with the sequencer here. So in this case, you can see I've actually activated both the filter LFO here, and you can see it uh, has a couple of variations in it. And I've also activated our sequencer. And these steps here actually correspond to velocity layers. Obviously, we also have round robin and all that stuff, but you can do some really cool sequencing and not even using our groove sampling technology here. But um, let me just show how it works right now. So we're going to play the marimba, but this time with brushes and then sequencing them. Alright, so that was a sequenced articulation using multi samples. Next up, let's listen to our groove samples here. In this case, we're going to be playing 16 notes. And I'll do two different examples. Let me just start by playing something super simple here, and then I'll do something more complex using the mod wheel. Um, I'll just start out by playing two different notes. So da da uh, on the keyboard, and you're gonna hear a very, very fluent da 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 da, very connected sound, and that's using our groove samples here. So um, this is just me playing two notes on the keyboard, but check out how real it sounds. And you can hear the sort of transition through dynamics. That's just me touching the mod wheel here. Uh, let me do something. Uh, let me just highlight this so you can actually see it. And keep an eye on down here on the mod wheel. Let me play something a little more complex here with the 16 mallets. Isn't it beautiful? And that's groove sampling in its essence. So right down here, we've recorded every single key, just like we do with normal multi samples, but they're played in consecutive fashion. So da 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 da. And that's why you have that very natural sound. These are things that you cannot do with multi samples because these are chopped up. A normal instrument will resonate notes into each other and into the next note. So that's why we've done these beautiful groove samples here. Let me give you um, another example of another patch here using the same technique here, but this time we're gonna play with 30 second notes here. And 
they're so much fun to play as well because they're exactly like you would normally play on a keyboard except that they sound super real and you have the mod wheel as well so you can crossfade between multiple dynamics so imagine us sampling each single key here in these consecutive fashions and it has to be very accurate because you cannot have any notes that are not synced together and all that so there is a variety of techniques going into this but the end result i think is pretty great uh, let me play another patch here. This is actually us bowing the marimba, but in this case here, I've also assigned this guy here, the gator, to my mod wheel by right-clicking it here and moving my mod wheel. And you can hear we play sort of a straight note, and then as I move the mod wheel up here, we'll open the filter, and the gate will sort of kick in. Really great for sort of more alternative sound design. And yes, my friend, that is indeed a boat marimba with a little bit of front-faced effects on it. And when I say front-faced effects, it's actually these guys here. We want to create something that's just super easy to use. It's one click away if you want to do really crazy stuff. And again, you can also click this question mark here that will randomize all the effects. And let me just show you one more patch here with the marimba. Um, in this example, I'm going to use the rolled mallets here. These are great for if you're sort of more tremolo-like effects. I personally prefer them for sort of using them for creating textures, really unique timbers out of the instruments. All right, next up is our beautiful vibraphone. And again, as I demonstrated with the marimba, let's start by playing our HD patch here, our high definition patch. Again, two microphones, all articulations loaded, but this is a beautiful vibraphone. And as you may have noticed in this uh, demonstration here, I like to play the instruments rather soft. One thing we really paid attention to, obviously you can play them very hard and pingy, but was really to record the more softer aspects of the percussion here. And there's so much beauty and richness down in them. Uh, let me play another variation here using, again, the vibraphone, but played with brushes, which is very uncommon for a vibraphone, but actually really, really cool. We also have this more orchestral version. And again, you can see here, I'm actually combining two different microphones here. And I think on the KSFX, we have the hall here as well. So a little more rich and roomy sounding. And it wouldn't be a vibraphone without a vibrating patch. Let me show you this guy here. I'm actually using the gate to generate the tremolo effect. And one of the cool things, um, I'm obviously using the gate a little bit alternatively for tremolo here, but you can actually control the speed of the gate here as well. And obviously I assigned this to my mod wheel by right clicking it out as well. Let me also show you um, a different mallet type here. So let's play a little bit with mallet two. So it's gonna have a little more of a pointy sound to it. And all those sort of star shimmery sounds you're hearing is coming from our form. This is our textual convolution reverb here. And you can really do some beautiful things by adding them. It allows you to not just have your normal delay, which we obviously have right here, but it actually creates a texture on its own. So it's not just delaying the sound, but it's actually combining it with another textual delay from a different sound source. It's absolutely beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, we also have another preset here. We call it the Wonderphone. It's just a beautiful, lush sounding vibraphone.
also created these cool patches where you can play the instruments in tremolo. One neat way of doing tremolos is using our 32 notes here, and then you click times two here, so it's gonna be super fast, but very, very precise. So it's like the ultimate percussionist playing super, super precise tremolo. Uh, let's try um, another one here. I'm gonna play a little bit with our eighth notes here on the mallet one, but this time I'm doubling them. So they're essentially behaving like a 16th here. And this is a cool trick. If you wanna try different tempos here, you can really figure out what works best. We also have triplets, of course. This is a request we've gotten many, many times and we figured out finally how to do it. So everything can be played both twice as fast, normal speed, triplets, and you actually have a variety of different speeds you can control here from modulators and variety of other things. So essentially covers every possible single speed. And of course it also does with lots of layers. All you have to do is to move your mod wheel here. Uh, let me show you the eighth notes here. And as we did on the marimba, you can also do these beautiful boat effects on the vibraphone here. It's actually a great boat instrument. You know, one of the things we try to do a lot is to make the instrument sound alive. So in this patch, for example, you can hear there's a lot of life going on. All I was doing is moving the mod wheel. I assigned the gate here to my mod wheel and you can also control the speed of the gate here. This is actually really effective for creating different sort of rhythmic timbres. And you can actually also do something as crazy as using the groove sampling methods here, run them through a gate and then use the gate at a different tempo than the groove samples to create really, really sort of polyrhythmic effects. Next up is our xylophone. And again, in usual fashion, we'll listen to the HD version first. This is a particular preset we call xylophone HD or marimba HD and so forth. And uh, it's just gorgeous for a xylophone. This is as good as it gets. It's actually funny, um, we were obviously trying to see if we could bow a xylophone, but um, it doesn't really respond well to a bow. So here's a, an alternative pad. So I took mallet one here, I took the amp envelope here and turned it up a little bit so it's gonna have more of a sort of soft attack. And then you add a little bit of different effects here. Our Wonder Viewer up here is one of our impulses down here called Wonder. And um, listen to it, it sort of sounds like a bowed xylophone. <laughs> Or it might even sound like more than a, just a boat xylophone. Um, let's check out the orchestral variation here. You can see this one is actually using our mid and our room mic, so it's a little more distant and it just sits better in our orchestral mix for an orchestral xylophone. And isn't it cool, you've been listening to completely dry instruments, dry marimba and vibraphone and xylophone here, and now you hear the wet version and it just works. And it's one of the feedback points we've really taken serious and it's something we are embedding into a lot of our future libraries that people want more control. They don't want that baked in reverb that we've heard in so many libraries. It's really hard to control and it's hard to get tight mixes with it. The whole sort of dominates the sound. So here you have full, full control over it. We can just turn the reverb off here and we're back in completely dry land. Uh, let me show another patch here um, with the xylophone here, but this time around, let's play with um, mallet number two instead. Let's uh, get up here. It's actually funny. I was listening to um, Nat Maroon 5 track. I was like, I don't want to know. Um, and this sound here was remarkably similar to the same sound they're using. I don't know if it's a xylophone with brushes, but it sounds pretty damn close. So 
so yeah, you could definitely use orchestral percussion for more dancey stuff as well. Uh, let me show you a really, really tight second two notes here playing with mallet too. Another way of using the groove samples in a sort of more textual fashion, it's not just that you can do your rhythmic stuff with them, but I actually like to use them sort of in combos uh, for more advanced polyrhythms, but also for clusters and textures. And of course, you also have the option to do the same thing with multi-sam. So let me just demonstrate uh, a similar thing to our groove sampling technology here. But this time I'm using our sequencer down here. So it's just going to go da 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 in terms of velocities. And just to give you a little feel of what you can actually do with the sound design, the aspects of the library here, you can see I've actually played a little around with our pitch envelope here, and it creates this sort of funny rain mallet type of sound. All right, let's move on here. Let's listen a little bit to our glockenspiel HD. Let me also show you um, the glockenspiel here played with mallet 2, but in this instance here, you can actually see I've taken the ambient envelope and dial it up here. It creates a softer attack and more sort of a bowie sound. And of course, you can also play the glockenspiel with brushes. And you can take the glockenspiel into the orchestral hall where it belongs. And again, you can see here, we have two different microphones, the mid and the room loaded. And microphones are super easy. It's essentially just one click here. You click whenever you want to load a microphone here. And uh, you can see uh, the memory footprint here corresponding really fast. Um, so in this case, we're going to play mid and room and with a little bit of reverb on it as well to emulate the stage. And let me also show you what it sounds like when we play uh, the groove sampling method here on the glockenspiel using 16 notes. I think they're so important, those da 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 Yeah, like you try to do that with multi samples. Uh, I can try it here. Let me just uh, load one patch here and let's see here. You know, it's just not the same. You just don't get the same feel, the same life. Uh, as you have with groove samples here. Uh, let me give you another uh, demonstration here of the groove samples. But you know, that's one way of using them. Uh, let me show you another experiment here using the glockenspiel, but playing uh, eighth notes here on the mallets in a more polyrhythmic textual cluster fashion. Isn't that great? And again, everything is completely tempo sync. So when you use the groove samples here, they'll adapt to whatever host tempo you have. That's one of the beauties of it. Next up is our crow tails. Let's listen here to mallet one.
And if you're familiar with crow tails, obviously they don't go that deep in their notes. You can actually see the keyboard down here. The dark blue here corresponds to the natural interval in the instrument and the light blue, baby blue here uh, corresponds to the sort of artificial stretch intervals as well. So you can always see when you're in the normal range and the outside range of the instrument here. Let me um, play something with mallet two. So this is again, a little more pointy and hard sounding. And here's the crow tails in a more orchestral fashion. Let me also show the boat crow tails here, or crotales. Um, it's absolutely difficult to do and to really get it right, but we got some beautiful boings here. Aren't they great? And you can see again, I took the gate here and assigned it to my mod wheel here. If you right click on it and you can right click on any of these guys and assign it to your mod wheel. It's super easy to create patches that way. And again, if you click the randomizer here, it actually takes and randomizes all the settings here. So you can always create very alternative patches here. I have no idea what it sounds like right now. It looks, <laughs> yes, definitely different. Uh, let me also show you um, our Kratali's wonder down here. And they're actually surprisingly cool to play uh, with the groove samples as well. Uh, let's listen here to Melod 1 playing eighth notes. And as you can probably hear, the filter was modulated here. You can see it's active here. And you can always draw a curve here if you want to change uh, any of the modulation here. We also have a randomizer here, so you can randomize the filter if you want to do that. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a single mouse track here, and you can create um, whatever beautiful curves you want to do. Uh, let's go on here to uh, the last instrument in the library, which is our tubular bells. Let's listen to Meld 1 here first. And I actually almost like the more play with brushes here. And uh, let's also listen to them here in, uh, listen to them in orchestral fashion. One of the easy ways of um, also having fun with the library is to play around with the pitch in the library here. You can see uh, this knob here that is actually all the way over here. So you can see the course is up at 12. So it's uh, dialed up an octave here. And you also have fine tuning here if you want to do that. And the great thing about these effects is you can actually assign each of these guys to your CC. So if you want to control the fine tuning and the course independently, you can do that. So pretty much like this, uh, I have them on two different controls right now. So you can see they're controlled completely independently. Let me also show you the tubular bells here um, played with group samples. Um, this is a very uncommon way of playing them, but they're actually pretty damn cool as sort of more progressive pulsing instruments. And that swelling you're hearing is essentially just me using the mod wheel. One of the great things about all our presets is that the mod wheel always does something unique and particularly great at controlling the sort of more dynamic aspects. Let me um, wrap the video up here by playing something really unique actually. This is our tubular bells played with brushes. And this time I'm running them through our sequencer. And as you can see here, I've dialed down the velocities. I really like them in a more sort of tempered range, almost down to, you know, piano, mezzo piano, if you're lucky um, on these guys here, but really soft. And there's a great, great pulsing texture to them. They're just beautiful.
Anyway, that's a lot of talking and a lot of demonstration and a long video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next one. And may I recommend that if you're interested in percussion, that you also watch the videos for our auxiliary percussion and our exotic percussion editions using the same methodology, both in terms of deep sampling and groove sampling here as well. This is really the way to go if you want to have completely realistic samples at your fingertips. And also if you want to have complete control both in regards to the microphone positions here, allowing you to have a completely dry studio sound or put them in the hall if you want, but also in terms of just having access to everything here. As you can see here, there's no need to go into any browser or anything like that. When you load an instrument, all the articulations come loaded here and obviously you can unload and load them exactly as you want. So long story short, thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next one.